What's up, everybody? Ryan Manley here. I'm sitting here with my brother, Jack Nakaza. How's it going? Oh, great. Every day is great. <laughs> Every day is great. And you're, so far, you're on the Jack and Ryan show. That's the name that we have it right now, but we're going to come up with a new one for you. But uh, uh, this show is all about, you know, highlighting people that are, are above average, you know, not trying to be the normal guy, you know, working the nine to five. They're working the side hustles. They're taking all the angles. They're making all the cool big stuff happen. So... Um, as we get started, you know, just want to give a quick shout out to Gallon Gear, Gallon Gear, which is the ultimate hydration sleeve. It'll go over a half gallon, which I have here, or a gallon water. Uh, basically, keeps all of your items in one place. Holds your phone. You can text and change songs through there. Keeps your keys strapped in, and then a little miscellaneous pocket to put your cash, gum, ID, whatever you want. Um, fits over the normal throwaway disposable jugs, or uh, there are BPA for your options. So. Thank you, Gallon Gear, for letting us set up shop here. Yep. All the colors. We got all the Gallon Gears here. <laughs> you got yours, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Got it right here. That's nice. I like right. that. I like the black one. Yeah, that, that leads us into who's joining us here, which is the little homie Kyle Mackinaw. What is that? Did up, I say man? that right? Yes, sir. You did. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. For sure, buddy. So um, how long have we known each other? Uh, I just had my real estate license for probably five, six, probably five years. About five, five years, years now? Yeah, yeah, it doesn't feel. It's crazy. And you're yeah, a total, what, 22? I'm, I'm 25. 25. Yeah. Wow, yeah. time flies, man. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So, known each other a few years, and I've really seen this this guy come up at, at a couple different angles. You know, he's been playing in the real estate space for a little while, but I think he really discovered his passion, which he's turned himself into the junk pimp daddy of uh, AZ, right? <laughs> I like that. That's a cool name, yeah. <laughs> Uh, also known as the Junk Goat. That's my TikTok <laughs> name, Junk Goat AZ. There you go. I love it. Um, but yeah, uh, full service junk removal company, Phoenix and Scottsdale. Pretty much pick up anything that you don't want to haul away yourself. Uh, do it for you know residential, commercial businesses, and then we also do demolition work too. So how do you guys make money on it? Um, we charge the customer based on how much we fill the truck. Okay. Yeah. So it's the service of pulling it away. That's how you make the Correct, money. Correct. Yeah. So we're full service coming into the home. You know, you show us the items that you want removed. Uh, crew of two, you know, fully professional, licensed, background check um, guys coming to the home, taking it out for you, loading it into the truck, um, take the payment, and then we take it. And we're actually one of the few. We have a construction yard out here in Phoenix that we take everything to. We can separate it based on it being, you know, trash, recyclables concrete dirt um instead of just taking it straight to the landfill so sweet yeah and then valuables obviously people are throwing away you know one man's yeah, trash is another man's treasure yes, kind sir. of deal right yeah i hear that often um every once in a while we'll get that um more so construction debris is what we're dealing with doing a lot of contractor pickups and um demo work but yeah every once in a while you'll get a, a good little find what's what's some of the best little finds you think someone tried to toss away um Probably the best find, I couldn't label it as one, but early on, probably about a year after I started, I had a lady that went through a divorce, had a house in Rio Verde, and we emptied the entire 4,000 square foot house, opened the door like there was nothing inside of it, or opened the door like she just left, you know, everything's no inside. Way. Yeah, she's, you know, sold the house, you know, split terms on what she was going through, wanted to kind of just eliminate everything in there, so we hauled away everything. So that was probably one of my best finds. Damn. Definitely some of the better furniture in there that we've seen. Um, we were able to resell, repurpose a lot of it. Um, but other than that, I haven't had like a, a crazy find that. No, no diamond, diamond rings. No diamond rings. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. Gold A little bit gold of gold bricks. here and there. Really? Yeah, Clint. Uh, I got Clint working with me, a gentleman I met at the Marriott uh, early on when I was, uh, before I started real estate sales. And uh, he's been working with me for a little over a year now. And yeah, I call him the gold marine. He finds it. <laughs> he when finds we, it. Yeah, we do clean outs for, you know, uh, property managers that are renting houses. And then, you know, the tenant escapes on them. So you'll find a little bit of gold in there. Just yeah. rings, cheap gold, stuff like that. Yeah. That's sweet. He's yeah. sitting right there. Yeah. Clint, the man. <laughs> he can't really hear us that well. He don't got no mic or uh, no, he setup. Can, here. He can hear us. It's not this guy. Yeah, I guess I can't. <laughs> So no uh, wads of cash and any old mattresses taken out. I've heard that kilos before. Kilos of cocaine or nothing. Uh, like we've that? found some drugs before. Nothing too serious. Um, but no, never any like big cash. No. Interesting. Unfortunately. 
So what'd you do with that full load of furniture and everything left in the house? Yeah, just repurposed it. We took it to our construction yard. We were able to resell, donate a lot of it, um, just kind of go through it and be able to kind of get it out there instead of just taking it straight to the dump. Um, obviously, we just charge her based on how much we fill the truck. So it was, it was a big house. You know, we hauled multiple loads out of there. But um, she loved the service, tipped us well, gave us a great review. I was able to rekey the house for her. So that's something we're doing a little different outside of the standard junk removal company is we add the, you know, service side to it. And we can kind of take care of other things just then, you know, hauling your trash for you. We want to bring the best customer service we can to the clientele and you know give them a good experience especially with a lot of people that we're dealing with can be out of state most of the time so yeah how many guys you got working with you uh, i got clint full-time and then i got probably three other dudes that i sub out in between like on-call work nice. um and then we'll put together a pretty nasty crew when we do demos so they go fast how many trucks do you have floating around out there uh two trucks one trailer uh, two bins i guess you would say so the main setup we roll with is a, a 500 cubic box truck uh, the original junk truck, and then we bought a dump trailer about a, a little over a year ago now. That's 16 feet long, 600 cubic feet. Nice. We can we can haul more trash than any junk removal company in the state of Arizona based on how much we can take at one time. You know, we just have the cubic space. We don't have to make two trips. Very cool. Yeah. And then you have like an annual pass to the dump or what? We don't get any special rights. I wish we <laughs> did. We get a little a card that we pay $5 for um, that knows our tear weight. So the only advantage we have is when we roll into the dump, we you know pay up front for it based on them knowing what we're, our weight is empty. Um, and then we get rid of our items and we're out. But yeah, pay the same as everybody else. Hmm. So you, you basically hit that every single day. Uh, yes, sir. Multiple yeah. times for yeah. sure. Yeah. Especially when it's construction debris. Yeah. Recycling is kind of floating away. Um, you know, Arizona's not really making any money on it anymore. So um, I think I'd say within the next couple of years, you'll see the bulk trash kind of be eliminated in some of the cities. Um, some of the recycling will go away. So. So you just, charge based on the weight of the removal or the no, the just size the of it? you just the si uh, based on how much it fills the truck. So we have four different truck sizes. Um, we have a single item price eighty five dollars, quarter truck load one hundred and fifty. I tell people that compares to what you could fit in like the back of a pickup truck. Oh, okay. Um, and then you have a half load at three hundred, full truck at four fifty. Um, so you, most of the loads we're doing commonly are like a quarter load. Like yeah. they have like a couch and a mattress and like a bed frame, or you'll do, you know, someone that is like a rental clean out, um, that they escaped on the property and the property manager needs it, you know, fully cleaned up. And that usually ends up filling the truck you right. know, every time. Yeah. Where'd you come up with this? Um, idea my stepdad and I had in high school, we we're just talking at the dinner table one night, just. Yeah, he's in the construction business, so he gets people all the time like, hey, will you take my, you know, my old play set since you're here, mm -hmm. you know, and he's like, well, we're going to this dump, and that's like the regular dump, and he's like, people always want us to like take their trash, but we're not here to do that, you know, I'm like, well, I bet people would pay to do that, you know, yeah, totally. and there's, and then you just research it, there's already, you know, 1-800-GOT-JUNK, Junk King, there's several franchises that have been around since the, you know, 80s, that right. have been doing it successfully, so why can't I do it out here, you know, on my own? So that's the way we do it. And it's fun. I like it. It's interesting business to be in, see uh, unique things every day and get to interact with um, all different types of people. Yeah. It's not even like uh, people. I don't think people are that lazy. They just don't have a truck. Exactly. <laughs> they don't and have the truck haul and all that other stuff. Yeah. yeah if you look at all that. And yeah. And I mean, if you're a business professional and you know, you can go to work and I can come in the morning and, you know, take it out and haul it away for you. You save, you know, the rental, the truck, the dump cost, the fuel, your time. I mean, you're right. bit, like you said in the beginning, it's just, they're paying for the service essentially, you know, yeah. getting rid of it. You know, most people can do. Is there anything you won't pick up? Um, usually won't pick up like large amount of tires or like toxic, like paint or chemicals. We're looking into that, figuring out how we can kind of get that to the right spot and start, you know, charging to do that. Cause we do get asked a lot, Hey, can you take, you know, these or, you know, large amounts of paint and stuff like that. And it's just, you can, you know, dump it, but you have to go through the right procedures of doing it. So with us, 
you know, basically the real estate is in the space of the truck, you know, so we're trying to run as many loads as we can a day. So if I start filling the truck up with stuff like that, that I can't get rid of, mm-hmm. it takes up space and yeah. Bogs down the whole system. Yeah, exactly. Um, you're coming at your advertising probably a little bit, you know, newer, more aggressively than most of the other junk companies out there. I mean, I haven't even heard of any of these junk places really before. Maybe you see a truck on the road or once in a while, yeah. but um, I just, you know, showed Jack your website, you know, right before you got here and literally on my Facebook feed, it, it was in my face, like no joke, 10 minutes Perfect. later. That's good. That's good. That's <laughs> so you want. guys, you guys got to dial them pretty Taking good. Taking the gallon gear strategy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally. Target, target, target. What's, what's your kind of your approach on that? And, you know. Yeah. Um, total, we, I would say, you know, when we first started, I main thing was got to have a good website, you know, got to have something people can go to. Um, it's very intent based. So, you know, if you are like, Oh, I got a pile of junk, it's very quick for someone to, you know, Google search that. Um, so if they can find us online, see the website, see that we're local, um, there's before and after pictures on there and advertising the price. A lot of the companies don't advertise the price up front. Right. We do that. So you can generally know, you know, what you'll be paying before we show up. Um, but yeah, I mean, we do a lot of different types of marketing too, just as far as uh, guerrilla marketing. We do a lot of um, bandit signs around the valley. Those seem to work pretty good. Are those the little like ones you stick in the ground? Yeah, the political yeah. Ones? Yeah, exactly. J- you know, you'll see like um, we buy houses cash, yeah. um, right, those right, ones. Right. Um, you know, we'll give you a hundred bucks for your windshield, yeah. stuff like that. Um, we're putting those in the ground. Uh, they work pretty good. We do uh, social media marketing, obviously. And then pay per click um, works really good for us as well. So on Google, cool. yeah. Are you guys basically just running around nailing those signs in the ground every corner you're on, or you have someone out doing that for you? Or? Yeah. So um, we have guys that I'll pay a, a buck a sign to buddies, and then I have you know guys that work on our team, obviously that you know if we're doing stuff around our yard and you know they're on their way home, they'll run 10, 15 signs and on their way home. Um, or if we're near a job, we're doing like a demo job and there's some free time. You put a couple in the corners nice. and, you know, call it a day. But um, there are there's companies out there that will put them out there for you, too, and stuff like that. But it's just um, I like it. It's kind of an escape. I, th- I There's totally a science behind it. Like the bandit signs are working because you place them in the right spot that someone's sitting there and they're forced to look at it because right. they have nothing else to do. So we kind of study the intersections, figure out where people will be waiting. And then also not just putting them in an area where they're going to be pulled immediately. You know, maybe not everyone will see them, um, but you're going to get more, uh, you're going to get a longer last time on that sign. And someone that's continually taking that route every day might see it and right. then they'll click with them. Oh, they saw the sign. They see the truck. Oh, now it's a Facebook ad. You know, the, and the huge thing I think is Instagram people, you know, following us and seeing what we're doing daily on our feed. And then that way, all they know is the name is junk rescue. And they think when they have junk, just, just call those guys. So you're getting a lot of people watching you on Instagram and your stories and stuff that are hitting you up. Yeah. I'd say, um, uh, last year we had a decent chunk from Instagram, That's but awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, I would say I'm taking more of a, a better approach from it now, posting a lot more, following a lot more people, engaging with, um, you know, real estate agents, um, property managers, just even residential people. They think it's cool. You know, it's kind of unique. So um, when people come to the page, they can kind of go through there and get an idea of what we do and what services we provide. And then if they like it, they hit follow. Now they see me post my stories every day, just kind of stays fresh in their mind. You know, everyone's on their phone. So I kind of think it's the winning space to be. Not everyone believes in it, but um, I, I mean, you can see Gallon Gear performs amazing through Instagram and social media. and It's, it's almost more convenient than Google, you know, it's just continually in their face every day. Yeah, that's what people are looking at, you know. Yeah. So I know you're doing a really good job in there. How do they find you on Instagram? Is it at Junk Rescue? Yeah, at Junk Rescue AZ um, is the Instagram handle. Very cool. Yeah. And I mean, post a story time. I mean, you constantly have, you know, your story kind of flowing and then just throwing random posts in there here and there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I used to post a lot more, kind of wait to post now unless it's like a, like a cooler situation or there's like a story behind it seem like the posts don't do as successful now as they did if you were like posting a lot um but the stories seem to 
be the best way at least for me because people interact with me on there so much and then that way yeah. you can kind of get them in the dms and, and talk about you know what services they might need right yeah i mean it seems like everyone's kind of a voyeur these days too they want to watch and look at what you're doing but they're not necessarily going to like your picture or comment on it yeah. or something you know so you can tell when people are watching Oh, yeah, for sure. We definitely got some Instagram creepers out there. <laughs> yeah. Anything, I know you guys are on TikTok, too. Is it the same thing at Junk Rescue AZ? Uh, that one's the uh, at Junk Go AZ. Um, and uh, have you had any? If you search, I haven't had any. I had the first video I posted got almost like 7,000 views. Nice. Um, and then from there, we've I think I had like one that got like 1,000. The rest just a couple hundred. But, um, yeah, TikTok is just sweet it what qualifies just, a view on tiktok like is it scrolling it and stopping or is it like the whole view or do we know that it's probably a certain amount of seconds i would assume it is but. there's like a, a video on there explaining like the you know yeah they have to watch it for a little bit and then rewatch it and then i think the likes don't equivalent uh, you know it's probably proportionate to how long the video is to you know like a certain amount of the video has to be watched yeah, it'd be the same question, I guess, on YouTube. What's considered a view if you have an right. hour video? I feel like it's a click on YouTube, though. I don't know. Somebody's going to watch this and be like, you guys are idiots. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> we they're should, like, these guys are talking about like stuff. they're on yeah. Instagram yeah. and TikTok. They don't know anything yeah. about that. Yeah, right. Gary V is just putting us to shame right <laughs> yeah, now. I know. Guy's a machine. Yeah, yeah, he is. Wealth and knowledge, for sure. Yeah, you got to learn somehow. Totally. Yeah. No, for sure. And it's all learning. The TikTok is... Uh, uh, even Clint was talking about it the other day, how uh, that the younger demographic can like post on it. You know, they're they're absorbing it and understanding it better than we are, um, and it's one of the like the first social platforms that's kind of exploding for like, yeah, totally. the younger age group, which is cool. They're monetizing it too. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, making Kids money on famous, it. Yeah. yeah. Well, how many views did Wendy Ortiz have? She's on got that? a couple of videos. I think one's at like one hundred forty thousand. Yeah. Show, you know, show oh, like, on her TikTok. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So I mean just put stuff out there it's crazy. she describes it as like a you know lottery or slot machine you never know <laughs> pulling what's gonna happen <laughs> that is true yeah i mean yeah. that first video got me hooked i'm like oh seven thousand views this is gonna be a banger you yeah, know i right? gotta post on here all the time you guys yeah. should wear like gopros on your shoulders while you load right? stuff you yeah. catch so many funny things we do need to get a lot more video content i was talking to ryan about that when we were first walking in is just getting a lot of quick action videos because i think it would work well with the business you know and, mm -hmm. and through ads and stuff like that and just would perform well yeah and doing they, just doing like slick stuff where you're like speeding things up like showing how fast you clear out the place and exactly things like that. yeah it kind of gives you a quick understanding of what we do you know without having to explain it to someone and i think educating people on the process because you know people are getting more concerned with what are you doing with the waste and is it being recycled correctly and Correct, just yeah. jump to the dump for, you know with yeah. everything else you know how you break it apart and that kind of stuff yeah pretty interesting yeah. yeah exactly yeah we definitely try and do our fair share of, you know, making sure it gets somewhere else and repurposing it. I mean, we're at the dump every day. There's so many people at the dump and that's mm -hmm. one dump that we're at. I mean, and there's how many states and I mean, we're producing trash every day. It's, it's insane. It, oh yeah. It's the waste mm. is never, will never uh, stop. It'll no. always be there. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It's a prevalent business. So what's your ideal, say, um, ideal client? If you could just run loads of this stuff all day long, what would be mm -hmm. what would be your main person you're trying to attract or do business with? Um, so per Gallon Gear would be like a perfect <laughs> person. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, could, we could arrange that. Right? Um, yeah, we work with a, comp a commercial company that um, uh, produces the, the – um, the golf simulators and they come in huge crates. Mm. Um, so they need us to haul those probably at least once a month, go there. It's quick load up commercial clean out. Um, those ones are super easy. You know, the spread on them's good, but I like them all, you know, they're all different and interesting and we're not really in it to do, you know, like, Oh, you know, what load can I do the most to make the most money at? Like this morning, for example, you know, don't have her on the calendar, a client that used this two years ago calls us she's down the street she's got a fridge i'm like hey i can come in like 30 minutes mm -hmm. that like made her day she's like you can come in 30 minutes like she's an old lady yeah, she's yeah. like i want it out of the garage you know on the way down we grab that and done and you just see the smile on her face it's it's funny how happy people get when you take the stuff right, away right, that yeah. they don't <laughs> want anymore well they never thought that somebody was going to come do this for them exactly they they're were just like wondering shocked and then the neighbors coming out as we're taking it how much you charge to do that i mean it's right. just something you don't see every day so people are just want to yeah ask and they're yeah. curious 
Well, I was doing it. I was in Park City, Utah, like two weeks ago. Love Park City. And my sister got a new bed, so I built her new bed. And then I'm pulling out the old bed, and I'm like dragging it down the street to like her just local dumpster. Yeah. And some guy comes up and he's like, "You can't put that there." Oh yeah. And I'm like, "Why the hell can't I put it here? Dude? It's a dumpster." <laughs> and he off. like made me like put it in the back of my brother-in-law's truck. Drive it. I drove it like two streets up and yeah. put the next dumpster. Yeah. But like you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. So we do cleanups like that a lot, where crazy. people just leave them by the dumpster, and then the apartment complex has to call us to get all the stuff around the five or six dumpsters they have there. And yeah, because the garbage guys aren't going to do it. Yeah. Right? No, I mean, they're based off of time. You know, they're supposed to pull up, fork it, dump it, drop the bin and go. They're doing a lot of bins a day. So that's killing their time. They got to get out of the truck, move it out of the way. Then it's it falls over. They can't put the bin back. So right. it's easier for them to say no thanks and go to the next one, mm -hmm. make you clean it up. Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. Sounds like a lot of referral marketing for you guys too. Yeah, it's a huge referral marketing based on giving great customer service to the clientele, um, them telling their friends, realtors, property managers, just like never knowing the service existed and then trying it and being like, wow, that made it way easier. You know, realtors on closing on the house when there's stuff that's left over and they're just yeah. like, I got to get this out because we close in the house in like two days and it's going to ruin the deal junk rescue there rolls in junk swipes rescue. it out cleans it out for you and then yeah the house is empty new buyers happy and cool yeah do you any do any like referral programs for people like they give you a certain amount of jobs to do yeah well, i mean we take care of our vendors at the end of the year for sure um one of our top vendors is doze moving it's a local moving company out here that's been owned and operated for six years and they you know moving goes hand in hand people move in they got a lot of boxes that are left over um, once they take everything out, so we break them down, pack them in the truck, haul them away. Um, so we take care of our people for sure. If that's what you're asking. Yeah. Is yeah. there anyone in particular that <clears throat> you don't have a relationship with, but you're like, man, if that company worked with me, yeah. Like, um, who are they? Yeah, no. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess I couldn't pick. Well, like moving companies, moving like companies, like that. and and see that's what I was I was telling Clint too. I go, I was like, we got so blessed that you know because Doe's hired us to haul some of their moving vaults like about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. and then now we've just been doing so much business for them. And I see all these other moving companies. I'm like, man, they suck. Yeah. And Doe's is so great. So I'm like, it's almost like these great vendors and people are like, you know, you know, we're finding them or they're finding us. You know, just along the way. Right. Um, and because I mean, I, I remember there was a moving company prior to that that I was like, oh, we need to hook up with them. They're huge. And then I'm like, I would totally not want to be like doing their stuff. Like they're a mess, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> and like I'm like, now nah, I got those. And so, yeah, it's I don't know. I'd I guess I couldn't pick one. I couldn't give you an answer right now. So yeah. Sure. Well, that's probably a good thing then. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, your market is so wide open. You know, anyone that's that anyone. thing you get rid of. You yeah. Know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Are you doing anything to like collect client information and stay in touch in front of those guys? Yeah. So we're we're just starting. Um, we just started working with um, IT Integrated Solutions. That's who we did our website, and so they're doing our ads and stuff too. And then um, they're also going to start doing an email drip. Um, we're keeping all our stuff. It, Clint's huge with that. He's been helping me in the last year organize everything, kind of get the you know clients set so that we can you know recapture them you know yeah. again and again because you would think we take their stuff, we're gone, and then you'd never see them again. But mm -hmm. we have so much repeat yeah, business; it's insane. Them. Exactly, yeah. Clint, Just, you're pretty important, man. He is. <laughs> the mask. Where's the like, fourth sounds, mic? We get this like guy a, in here. Like the brain I know, dude. We gotta get a right. Fourth well, mic. he's. I would say I'm more the visionary, and Clint's the integrator, and that's totally what you need in a business. Yeah. You know, I gotta be able to have the idea and want to do it, and then Clint kind of stays on top of me and kind of puts everything together, and then boom, it just meshes. So, right. Yeah. Very cool. cool. I like it. So what's next for you guys? Like what, you know, you're a big GC guy, Grant, yeah, Cardone, Grant Cardone, Uncle Gene. And yeah. uh, so uh, you're probably uh, setting some massive 10X goals this year. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely want to double down on what we did last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as the junk removal business, definitely want to kind of explode the brand and kind of, you know, get that recognized. That way, you know, we could, you know, potentially sell it in different states and franchise it and stuff like yeah, that. Be able go. to see, um, you know, fly out and help other people, you know, entrepreneurs, people like yourself that are motivated, want to win, do something cool, but they see the brand and the way it looks and they like it and we can kind of help them, you know, explode their junk removal business. That's interesting. Yeah. You're, uh, 
in a pretty good setup to start franchising. Oh yeah, for sure. This yeah. guy over here knows I should be talking to him. Yeah. <laughs> right? Well, you have a really low startup cost. Uh, f- no, not necessarily. I mean, I mean truck, truck, truck is, trucks, insurance. How much is the yeah. truck? Uh, that setup, you know, it's going to cost you probably a hundred dollars a day just to run it with truck and, um, insurance and stuff like that. It's a and, 70,000 and truck and the labor. Um, no, not including the labor. So you're going to have $85 a day run at the truck, two right. labors in there, dumping costs, fuel time, lead cost. Yeah. Like what's your total cost per day if you're doing a full day? Um, if you're doing a full day, yeah, you, so you need to do three full loads a day. That's 1500 bucks. Um, you're going to have $500 in expenses. So that's, that's, that's making a thousand dollars a day. That's yeah, the with, mar- with the, human labor. Yeah. The margins are, are, are good. Um, you just have to be time efficient and know what you're doing. Cause you yeah. can get, you know, lost in the sauce and the lady's house trying to help her with everything exactly. under the sun. And then you miss an appointment and then the dump, is line is closed so not every day is you know winning um mm-hmm. but as you do it like how i've been doing it now for a, a little bit it, you start to figure things out along the way where you can like cut right you know, and, and make bigger gains for sure do you have stuff that's too large for you to move and you just can't suit too heavy yeah so mm-hmm. if we have like su- stuff that's like super heavy does you know mm-hmm. those movings totally they got uh, more guys than we do um they have like all the heavy stuff to move like heavy safes like heavy furniture yeah. Nice. You got so the connections. Just, yeah. And then if someone's out. just like got piles of stuff everywhere in their backyard, even it's take you hours to clean out, you yeah. still do that kind of stuff? So, yeah. We have machinery that we can mm-hmm. use to load it into our dump trailers and stuff to make it efficient and fast. Um, you know, most of the stuff we're doing is just like hand labor where you're going, you know, up and down elevators, moving couches, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. But um, we've had some interesting jobs we, that we you know, a challenge is what we like. Like I was saying earlier in the podcast, definitely not your everyday junk removal company where you'll, you know, come into a situation and the, you know, that company will probably turn it down just because it costs them too much time and efforts. But for us, it's something interesting and different. And, you know, if the bid price is right, we'll try and tackle it. Very cool. Yeah. I like it. So people have junk here in AZ. Um, how do they get a hold of you? Yeah, Junk Rescue, um, junkrescueaz.com, 480-719-0611, at Junk Rescue AZ. See what we do every day. Uh, we haul junk. Nice. <laughs> is that your tagline? We haul junk? Uh, my tagline is uh, just click or call. We haul it all. There you go. Nice. Yeah. I it's like it. Good, dude. Yeah, I appreciate it. A big marketplace for that. Yeah, there's, I mean, like you guys were saying, that everybody needs it, you know. Yeah. You just kind of got to find the people and be in front of them. Yeah, I mean, we're in the home loan business over here primarily, and yeah, we kind of think of it like everybody wants to own a home one day, but it doesn't matter if you own it or rent it. You got some, you got some stuff you might need to get rid of. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's pretty crazy. Yep. Good for you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Well, good job, brother. We definitely yeah. appreciate you coming on the show yeah. here. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, sharing your hustle and uh, your motivation, inspiring everyone out there that wants to start yeah. their own gig out of nothing, which is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. It's super fun. It's it's stressful. Uh, you're not going to make money for a long time, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, um, you get to do what you want to do every day. And um, it's just, it's amazing. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's super fun. So it's not for everybody. That's for sure, but you know, if you got if you got the balls to try it, go for it. <laughs> go for it, dude. Yeah. Buy the truck. Yeah, why not? You can always sell it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. You'll cool, need man. to because we're picking up the junk, so you'll have to sell it. Uh, <laughs> awesome. All right, man. Well, we appreciate your time. All right, thank you, boys. Well, I appreciate you. Thanks for setting it up, Jack. Cool. All thank right. you. Later.